Hey everyone, welcome back to another Holland Good Review. Today we're looking at their second entry of Stegosaurs, their Das and Truis. Now I'm going to keep the intro short and sweet since uh, I've been a cheapskate lately. I've been ordering these figures out of the box. You know, they still come shipped in their foam inserts with no need to go over all that. So I ended up getting them off of AliExpress. Uh, I think they were $17.99. Like I said, saves you like 2 or $3 if you get them out of the box. Uh, inside the box, blah, 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 hit foam. You get a little aquarium plant, blah, 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 and both of them. And that should do it for the packaging. So if you want to order these figures, uh, I'll leave a link down below to the AliExpress store I got them from. And good news for, you know, other people in Europe. Everton Dinosaur is going to start stocking these, I think, sometime in September. So that's another way you can get your hands on these magnificent figures. And here are both figures out of the packaging, and oh my, oh my, daddy likes. These are absolutely phenomenal. Pretty much a night and day difference be uh, between their previously released Huerasaurus, which I felt uh, were a little, you know, flat on the details and paint apps, but these Dennis and Truist are absolutely breathtaking. The paint apps are top-notch. The sculpting detail is phenomenal, and that's what we've come to expect uh, from Holland Good. They have just been rapid fire with their releases, and I always say it during these reviews, they are so affordable. Uh, it's so easy to get both versions of their figures. Now, obviously, you know, we got two versions right here. We have the orange version, which is spectacular. And on the other side, as it swings around, we have the green version. Uh, both these paint apps are fantastic. Uh, I really, you know, having a tough time choosing which one would be my favorite. If, you know, gun to my head, uh, I would probably go with the uh, orange one because, you know, green, I think, is very, very overdone on Stegosaur figures. But, you know, the way the paint apps is on the screen one with those blue highlights really makes it stand out for all those other green Stegosaurs. Now, Dash and Truist is from Europe. Um, it was, you know, discovered, I think, like, 1875, and back then it was called Omeosaurus. Uh, but, like, you know, half a dozen species or so were attributed to Omeosaurus until it found out that the name was occupied by a crocodile, and then it was changed to Das and Truist. Um, so, yeah, a little quick history on this spiky little boy right here. But, yeah, these things just look absolutely phenomenal. And for measurements, these figures are eight and a half inches long from the tip of the snout to the tip of the tail, or 21.6 centimeters. And three inches tall to that tallest uh, spike above the hips, or 7.6 centimeters. So Das and Truist uh, in real life was estimated between 26 to 30 feet long, which would make it one of the largest stegosaurs. So I put this figure somewhere in the 136 to the 142 scale range. And now let's zoom in and take a look at some of the fire details on this figure, starting with the orange variant. You can see the eye is painted bright blue with a black pupil. Always say it during my reviews. Love blue eyes on dinosaur figures. I always find it so striking. You can see the mouth is nicely sculpted right here. The mouth is way more defined uh, than their Huerasaurus. Uh, I'm going to take that figure out uh, later on during comparison to show you the night and day differences between the two figures. Uh, the head, like I said, is beautifully sculpted. Lots of nice scale detail all over the figure. You can see the beak sculpted in right here, the nostrils sculpted in. Here's a view of the head from the top. You do have this white wash that starts on the top of the head that goes all the way down the middle of the body to the tail. It all looks like caked up dirt. Now I've seen some other people's uh, examples of this figure where the white wash is a little bit overdone. It's actually running down the side. So I mean, that's just a small quality control issue. You can see the nice long neck the head is perched on. On the other side, you can see all those nice osteoderms for that protective for the protecting the neck, nicely sculpted. You have all this nice orange coloration with these black uh, highlights. It remind the coloration reminds me of the Papo Cryolophosaurus, and we'll also take that figure out later. Show you the similarities between the color schemes, going down to the shoulder. The shoulder spike is really nicely done. You have some nice detail at the base of this. There's a nice wash of dark brown before it goes to that bone white coloration. Going down to the forearms, nicely sculpted. Got some large osteoderms uh, along the inside of the arms. Toe claws are painted in a light gray coloration. Let's get the camera to focus in on that. That front foot is lifted up, taking a step forward. So it's a nice, you know, peaceful, active uh, sculpt to it. Going down to the main body, you can see more osteoderms peppered throughout with a light coloration for the flanks and the underbelly. It has a nice wide gut and wide hips as it should. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of material on Death and Truist. You know, the original holotype was mostly the hip girdle, femur, and a couple other uh, assorted parts of the animal. Most of the reconstruction is borrowed from Maragaya. Going down to the hind legs, you can see the hind legs are nice and muscular, more of that orange and black striping. Toe claws, same thing. Light gray, 
The plates on the back are very, very well done. They have a nice orange coloration at the tips before it goes down to a darker brown. And you can see some of the details on those plates. There's a little bit of that white wash to highlight all the carotene sheath over the plates. And then going down to the tail, those plates eventually turn into a row uh, spikes going all the way down to the tip of the tail. There's all these spiky, spiky osteoderms at the end of the tail. I think that's a really, really cool touch. Obviously, the spikes are made out of a soft, flexible material. That's why I have a little bit of warping on mine, but really not a big deal. And let's turn over and let's do our dinosaur bum bum check. There is a, you know, a decent cloaca slit. I gave it, I give it a four out of a ten. And yeah, this whole figure is just drop dead gorgeous. How long good? Um, for the most part, has been really, really consistent with their figures. There have been a couple, you know, misses. I think their Hoerosaurus uh, was a little, you know, light in the details in there. Allosaurus was eh. But everything else they released, I think, has been absolutely top-notch. And you just cannot beat their prices. And now let's take a look at the green variant. Unlike the orange one, this one actually has a white eye with a black pupil. Same thing. You can see the mouth is very clearly defined. You can see the beak sculpted in right here. And let's take a view. At the top of the head, you can see all those large scales it's on the top head, nicely, nicely sculpted. Now, this one doesn't have a white wash. It has a brown wash down the middle of its back between all the plates. It goes all the way down to the tip of the tail. Uh, the green coloration is just very, very well done in this figure. Like I said earlier, you know, green, you know, reddish-orange plates on Stegosaurus is so overdone, but such a natural, nicely done color scheme. And with these blue uh, highlights for stripes, really, really makes this figure have a nice, striking, yet natural look. Same thing with the shoulder spike. Nice detail on that shoulder spike. You have a little bit of that. Uh, dark brown, a little bit of dry brushing of white to bring out all the rough details at the base of the spike before it goes to that bone coloration, going down to the arms. Same thing, toe claws, light gray coloration. You see the osteoderms, all that green and light blue. Uh, going down to the flanks, there's a little bit of like a pinkish orange highlight for all the folds and wrinkles. On the underside, we do have a darker uh you know, brown color for the underside of the belly. You know, really differentiates the two variants of this figure. You can see some nice details on the bottom of the feet. And then going down to the plates, uh, you do have some nice, let's get the camera to focus in all on that. Plates are just a little bit lighter orange than the uh, orange variant. You have some brown at the base of those uh, spikes. You can see them erupting uh, the back with all these large scales surrounding each spike. Very, very cool detail. More osteoderms and beautiful, beautiful scale detail all over the figure. Uh, you know, the big thing was before this figure came out, a lot of people thought we were getting Centrosaurus. I thought we were getting Centros, uh, not Centrosaurus, Kentrosaurus, oh boy. Uh, I really, really wanted a really nice Kentrosaurus figure for my collection. I really thought Hanukkah was gonna deliver, but I'm okay with a Das and Truth for now. The way they're cranking out species, I'm sure it's just a matter of time uh, before we get a Kentrosaurus. Even though Safari just released a repaint of theirs and uh, just not a fan of that color scheme on it, that blue, blech. Uh, go down to the legs, same thing. You can see you know, the legs are kind of painted, pinkish brown coloration at the bottom of the feet. And then going down to the tail, you can see that row of plates transition into pairs of spikes all the way down to the end of the tail. Still absolutely love this detail at the end with those really like spiky, knobby osteoderms. I think it's a really, really neat touch. And let's just do the bum bum check again. Yep, there it is right there. So yeah, green variant and the orange variant, just both absolutely spectacular looking models. Moving on with comparisons, here it is with Collect A's 140 scale human. You know, these Figures are you know roughly that 135 ish to 140 scale range, so it gives you a good idea of how big the uh, Das and Truist was in real life. And next up, uh, surprisingly, this is not our first Das and Truist figure. We actually got one uh, a few years ago from Batat. These were uh, some of the new figures uh, that they released uh, from Dan Larusso before his unfortunate passing. And then right after that, Batat says, eh, we're not going to sell dinosaur figures anymore because dinosaur figures definitely don't sell. They definitely don't want money. And there's a bunch of unreleased prototypes that uh, they never, ever released. I'm sure maybe there's some legal issues with that. But uh, it's a shame that Batat stopped uh, releasing figures because, you know, for long-time dinosaur collectors, those were the holy grails. And uh, I have a quarry near me, and they like to detonate dynamite, like, you know, once a day at a certain time, my whole house just shook like there was an earthquake. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, you can see the uh, Holland Good one. It's just vastly superior uh, to Batats. And, you know, they were, you know, pretty similar price. I think this was like 10 bucks. And look what you're getting for like $7 more. It's just a night and day difference. 
And next up, here it is with PNSO's Maragaya. Let's zoom out just a little bit so we can see more of the figures. You can clearly see, you know, the reconstruction of the Essence Truth is heavily based on Maragaya. They were very, very closely related. You know, obviously, Maragaya had a much, much longer neck, but you can definitely see the inspiration uh, taken from Maragaya for Dess and Truis. And next up here is Hollow Goods first Stegosaurus, their Huerosaurus. And, you know, put these side by side, you swear they're not from the same company. You know, the paint apps uh, and the details. Uh, between both figures is night and day. This is much more detailed, better painted. Uh, I like the Huerosaurus. It was cool getting you know, these obscure species, but they were just so light on the detail and paint apps. It just looked like they just were like half finished. Uh, so yeah, the Dash and Truist definitely, definitely blows away the Huerosaurus. Like you can, uh, you can barely even see the mouth slits on these figures. And like maybe they heard our uh, critique about these and they made the uh, mouths much, much more defined on Dash and Truist. And let's do a couple more Stegosaur figures. Next up, here it is with PNSO's Stegosaurus. And, you know, Dash and Truist is roughly the same size as uh, this Stegosaurus. You know, they're pretty close in size in real life. And let's do another Stegosaurus figures. Here it is with Safari Limited Stegosaurus. And what else do I have on the table for Stegosaurus? I, have, I love my new studio. I have so much room to keep models off to the side. Uh, here it is with PNSO's uh, Tojangosaurus. Uh, I don't remember what the scale was on the Tojangosaurus. I think it was a little bit big. Uh, so yeah, that definitely does not scale with these uh, Das and Truis. And here is the orange variant with the Papocryolophosaurus. Like I said, I feel like the color schemes are, you know, kind of similar. You know, the Papo one has a little bit more brighter orange, but just, you know, the, the overall pattern with the orange and the black stripe and just made the two figures look like they had similar color schemes. And let's finish this up with some other Holland Good figures and see how they stack up. Here it is with the previously released Allosaurus, which I think is a good figure, but could have been a much, much better figure in my eyes. And next up, here it is with their Aranosaurus. And just, you know, I've talked about this in other reviews. You know, Holland Good has a very, very good uh, communication with the dinosaur collecting community. They're very active on the dinosaur toy forum. You know, the biggest issue with the Aranosaurus was it lacked a thumb spike, but they went back and retooled the mold. mold so now all the new ones are coming with the thumb spike on it. So I think it's very, very cool that they listened and did such a quick turnaround to correct that error. And next up, here it is with their Edmontonia. And next, here it is with their Pentaceratops. And lastly, it's still my favorite release, pretty much my favorite release of the year so far. And here it is, the amazing, massive Apatosaurus. Absolutely love that figure. It's definitely uh, one of my favorite figures I got this year. And I believe they're working on another sauropod. And the big rumor, it's probably going to be Alamosaurus, which is fantastic. We really need an Alamosaurus figure. It's going to look great uh, displayed next to a T-Rex figure. So find the thoughts on Hollow Goods, Das and Truist. Uh, two absolutely phenomenal looking figures. You just can't beat the price. You know, 18 bucks. Look at the quality of these figures, this, the the paint apps, the sculpting and detail. You 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 are not paying these prices uh, if PNSO released these figures. There's, you know, there's been a lot of comparison between Hollow Good and PNSO lately, as they should be. You know, they're both releasing similarly uh, quality products, uh, but Hollow Good's doing it for like literally half the price, and you you just can't beat them on the Dyson Collective market right now for accuracy. You know, looks of the figure and the paint apps. Like no one is coming close. I absolutely love it. I can't see wait to see what else they have in store for us. Uh, like I said earlier, I got these off AliExpress. They're, you know, seventeen ninety nine without the box. I'll leave a link down below in the description from the AliExpress store I got them from. So that should do it for uh, for the review. We've got the PNSO Megalosaurus coming in. Uh, all the rest of my Wave 2 Beast of Mesozoic uh, Tyrannosaurus should be here uh, sometime today. So I have a lot of work ahead of me uh, reviewing those. So stay tuned for all that. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on the channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously. And it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.